congratulations on this. I, I saw it at Tribeca and loved it. So I've been telling people about this for what feels like seven years because time has lost all meaning. Mm -hmm. um, how, do, how does it feel to like, you know, obviously you make it even longer ago. You hear the first sort of wave of what people think and then you obviously go off and make more things. And then eventually you come back and now start talking about it again. Does it feel like oddly removed or is it just also kind of refreshing to be like, I remember that it was a fun memory. I feel like we, I don't know, Ben, if you've made something and then talked about it three years later, but this is still for me at like kind of a normal time. I, I Before Mark and Mary, I did something and it didn't come out for two and a half years. And, and this is shorter than that. So, so I feel like it feels like a very long time ago because we were a little bit confined. Yeah for a bit, but um, it's nice to talk about. It still feels fresh. Bringing it up brings it back to life for me. Yeah, I feel similarly. I, I, I mean, you know, usually the night before we start <laughs> doing press for something, I'll be like, wait, what was that movie about? What did I do? But then once I'm like with Haley again, even through Zoom, it's like, oh, I remember what it was about. I remember what we did. Um, so there's a sort of muscle memory with it when you're around the crew that you made it with. It sort of comes back to life in a way, which is helpful. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, especially if it's yeah. a good experience. I would imagine if it's like, yes. you know, those trouble, like troubled production, everyone hates each other. Like, oh, great, we have to do this. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but well, probably still bring back the memories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just be less fun. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Oh, I remember this. This is like uh, some sort of uh, PTSD situation. Great. All right. Let's promote this yeah. movie I wish I hadn't made. <laughs> Which, yeah. You know, yeah, those usually come with big paychecks, but at the same time, like I was like when I talked to Hannah, like <laughs> yeah, wish, like you know, she makes things that are so much fun, but also are getting at real things that, like, I can only imagine what being on the the set is like, because you you must feel like okay, I'm I'm really in it, but also like this is, are they gonna like stop us? This is too much fun. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had moments like that. Yeah, I mean. I felt a lot of the time on set, like, how is this possible? Yeah. How can we possibly be allowed to do this for a living? It's and like trying so hard not to laugh. There was, there was moments where we could hear the crew laughing, like just little chuckles. And it was fueling me to do more. But also I was trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> but that's those are the funnest takes for sure yeah well, I, can, I i can imagine like especially like like it's funny i i just showed hell i just showed my girlfriend spontaneous and mm. which was one of my favorite movies last year and just it's the same thing like whenever someone has like just a real like sharp line even if it's scripted i have to imagine for other people like if it's genuinely funny it's got to be hard not to just react as a human being even if you're supposed to be like i'm pissed at you in this scene mm -hmm. Fuck, that was funny yeah, I love that. I think that every time I watch something, I just imagine, God, what would it be like to be on the set or to be the DP shooting it or, you know, and just being right in your face when uh, there's a scene where Ben and I are having the conversation about um, having a threesome in the bed and Casey, our DP, was very close <laughs> and we're both in our you know, sleeping attire. And it was just so funny. And it felt like Casey was part of our relationship, the whole movie. It was you, me and Casey yeah. <laughs> for a month. And yeah, it just, it was, it was just so much fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, it really was. And Hannah really created an environment where she didn't want to hear about film festivals or distributors or what's going to happen in the movie. She's like, let's just be here right now. And like we're saying, she wanted to have fun. She really made that as a, an important part of the process. Yeah. And it gave us a lot of freedom to try things, I feel. Oh, yeah. You can tell, like, it's not that type of project where it's like, okay, this has, and not in a bad way, but like, okay, this is made so we can get the point A to get the point B to get the point C. Like, it's like, I want to make this because I want to see this movie. And that, and that goes a long way. And it's, it's funny. You were talking about like the, having the DP there or like, it, is Casey going to laugh? Like, oh my God, what or the crew that, that extends even to like bigger projects. Cause I, I spoke to um, Scorsese's DP and apparently Scorsese would ruin takes on the Wolf of Wall Street by laughing at DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> 
Like, he knows what's going to happen. And it's a giant yeah. expensive movie where time is money. And he's still screwing up takes because, like, that's funny. I can't help it. So, like, it's, yeah. it's the universal, I think, feeling of, like, okay, we're having a good time, which at its core, like, you know, serious movie cop, like, that's, that's no matter what you do, you're supposed to be having a good time because there are worse things you could be doing in life. Like, it's, it, does, it feels weird to see people who, like, look at it like they're in the mines. Mm-hmm. It's like, and you can you know, see you it, want. you can feel it when you watch it, that yeah. people were having a great time shooting it. As opposed to, like, the people who are like, I, I, I can tell it's not you every time it's the back of your head. Like, you definitely only showed up for the, for the uh, frontal shots in Croatia or wherever you mm-hmm. guys shot this. Like, I'm, I'm sure your $2 million was great, but, like, you definitely hated the, the month you were there. That's not, like... Like, like Hannah even said, like, she's like, I lost money on this movie, but I had a good time. Like, mm-hmm. that's worth it. Um, that's, like, that's hard, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> well, you lose your I, money, you have a good time. Obviously, there are, there are bigger things to come for all of you. But when you read the script, like, it obviously reads smaller. And like, okay, this is going to be made at a, at a certain level. How do you, how do you know it's something you want to do? Because obviously you get more offers than projects that you do. And, and probably most of them suck because that's just the way it works. Like, you know, okay, this is bad. This is bad. When you read something like this, how do you know? Obviously, you know it's good, but how do you know you want to make it? I feel like it's similar to when you meet somebody and you get like a little butterfly tingle yeah. and you read it and you connect with the character which I feel like happens so rarely, maybe three times only. I mean, I haven't done a ton of stuff, but I feel like I've only felt that way two or three times. And this one, I remember, I wasn't sure if Hannah wanted me to play Mary and we were talking about the script and the characters. And I, at the end, I was just like, I have to be Mary. I don't know if you're thinking of other people or what, but I, I want to be Mary so bad. I feel like I am this person or this person is a version of me that I need to play. And yeah, I, I just, I felt like I had butterflies, like I had a crush on this script. Yeah, I think having a crush on it is a really good way to uh, describe it, you know? And you gotta like calm yourself down. You don't wanna want it too much and freak totally. them out. You gotta play hard <laughs> to get. To be, <laughs> yeah, you gotta play it cool. You don't know, yeah, you don't know what they want, you know? <laughs> yeah. It can be scary. Um, but I think beyond that sort of instinct feeling that Haley's talking about, there's also just this matter of like who's involved. And Hannah Marks was definitely someone that I was like aware of as a really talented actor and a very talented filmmaker as well um and so I was excited to see her name and then some of the producers on this movie I had worked with previously on a film called Six Years Mm. um this guy Kelly Williams Jonathan Duffy they have this company 10 Acre Films I was one of the producers on this movie yeah so to get to work with people again that you really like is always a treat um that added to it but yeah the script is the thing, man. You can't, without, without that, you, you can't really move forward, I don't think. Yeah, it, yeah it's because it seems weird when you hear about these projects that start without a script. We'll figure it out, just, you know, and you're in. It's like, well, that, that sounds like really rolling the dice as it opposed is. to like, okay, I know I love this script whatever like filmmaking challenges will come up that seems way more achievable than like okay we also have to make the movie while we're writing the movie because Mm -hmm. it has to be out in six months from now like those that that seems just like everyone's stressed at all given times and i'm sure there's stress on this but it's more about like we have limited time and we want to do a good job as opposed to like can we even do a job (laughs) let alone will it be good absolutely Yeah, I think everybody trusted each other because Hannah was super honest and was like, it's friends making a movie. Um, We're going to do what we can. We have a short amount of time, but we both, I mean, we, we both definitely trusted Hannah and each other. And it, it just turned out, I, I, I loved it. And I feel like I'm very, I don't love anything (laughs) that I'm in even it's just hard. It's just hard to separate yourself. But I really had a good time watching this movie as well. 
Yeah. And I think it shows, I think the trust and the confidence in the project showed. Oh yeah. And this, this would be a hard one. I think even, even objectively, like I just, it, yeah, like this feels like it would be a hard one to watch yourself in just because it's, it's like, well, that's not how I usually look at myself. And then also like, oh, here's these like deep emotional places I'm going to, but to be able to, to like it, one is a credit to your, your own work, but like, that's, you know, that's a separate thing to like, can I watch the movie? Cause I'm sure there, you know, you could be amazing or awful in something and be like, well, the movie's good. Whether I am helping or not is another story, but like watching it and enjoying it while you're there speaks to everyone involved. Like it's not just, oh, my work or not just Hannah's writing and direction, or it's not just Ben. Like it's, it's everyone together. It made sense. Cause I think there's so many versions of this movie that are all the way comedy, all the way like trying to be sexy and, and very rarely are they trying to actually like have the conversation this one's having. Yeah. yeah yeah which i'm sure is is a, is a selling point also but does it make it like when you guys know you're working together is it is it tougher to to play the part because you know like we, we know as human beings if it'll be bullshit and like none of this is meant to be fake like how do we make sure this feels like a real albeit unconventional relationship i think um part of that was definitely the freedom we had to improvise on set. Um, you know, just, I think with most of these scenes, we would go a little off book sometimes and then come back to the script. And I always felt like that was, you know, bringing whatever energy we had in the moment into the scene in a really good way. Yeah, it definitely feel, it feels like it helped it be real because things would just pop into our heads and we would just say them. And sometimes they worked. Yeah. Um, more often than not, they worked actually. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of improv in the movie. Little bits that we'd start riffing at the end of a scene or, um, yeah, but Hannah's dialogue is also really, really smart and kind of quippy and wry. And um, so the combination of those two things to be able to like, do something that has a good structure and then leave that and then come back to it and then leave it and come back to it. It just kind of kept everything really fresh and, and, and not, not getting stale as you see sometimes, you know, right. when things get stiff. And it's, and it's a talent too, because she, she has a very specific voice and you can tell, you can tell it's one of her movies already. And to be able to speak in that language, one is like, obviously an actor skill like okay I know how this reads but then to riff in that voice still and, and have it like feed the story even if it's not necessarily like moving the plot along but sounds what Mark would say sounds what Mary like what Mary would say is a is a skill and is like probably another version of like just that thing in your head going oh this is going well like yeah like we, we're, we're pulling this off like because yeah, that's a definite that's that's exactly the feeling Oh yeah, because then, then you have the character for real. Yeah. And part of the cool thing about working with a writer director is you're spending all this time with the person who wrote it. Yeah. So you start to feel more and more. I mean, Hannah's talked a, a lot about how you know Mark and Mary are are two sides of her brain, yeah. and about this uh, this idea about open relationships and marriage and how to make all of that work or make sense and. Yeah, so when you're hanging out on set and working all day and all night with this person who wrote the thing, you just start to pick up off of that energy if you're, you know, you, you hear the things she says and you start to think, oh, that's Mark. Oh, that's Mary. Yeah. And that gives you a little more uh, fuel, creative fuel to, to make those improvisational choices. Totally. And like, it, you can you can just tell that everyone involved is on the same page. And that's, I think, one of like, seven one of the like several reasons why why this works so like i know you guys have more of these to do so i just want to wrap up by congratulating you guys again like the movie's great and like mm -hmm. does does something hard which is like like you said it's like two sides of our brain but it's it's very much two sides of a of a coin but it feeds equally into them and that's that's the hardest thing like uh, you know you you kind of spend the, the movie waiting for which side to win because that's how you're trained to think and when you get to the end, it's it's a little surprising how it turns out, but it's it feels real and it feels honest and it feels like 
this is what everyone's out to make. So you guys should just be incredibly proud. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. It was such a lovely interview. Yes. Uh, I try. Um, <laughs> where, where else are you getting I love the movie and I love Spontaneous? Like that's a, you know. I know. That's actually how I was intro to Hannah was she um, knew the director of Spontaneous and watched Spontaneous and he put us in touch. It does feel like it would very much be her thing also. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you.